This product is legal in California for racing vehicles that shall never be operated upon a public highway. AEM holds no responsibility for any engine damage that results from the misuse of this product. This video is one in a series of videos that cover the configuration and use of the TrueBoost Boost Controller Gauge. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to use the Boost Control function. Viewers watching this video should already be familiar with the basic TrueBoost controls and options. If you are not, please see TrueBoost Video 1 before continuing. To start, we're going to establish a baseline for what we'll make for boost when the boost control function is actually turned off. Even though the boost control function has been turned off, the true boost will still display the current manifold pressure. To turn the boost control function off, press and hold the left button for two seconds and then release to toggle through the function modes. Select the off mode. Now we'll start the vehicle and make our first baseline run. And we'll jump ahead here. The gauge is currently showing vacuum, which is displayed as inches of mercury with a negative sign. And as we complete the run, it looks like we're making about 8 to 9 psi of boost. We've now turned the boost control function on and we're using mode A. The duty cycle has been set to its lowest setting of 10%. In this run you'll see that we make the same 8 to 9 psi of boost which is the same amount of boost we made when the boost control function was turned off. For the next run, we'll increase the duty cycle to 25%. Normally, you would only make small incremental changes if you're unfamiliar with how the turbo setup is going to react with different duty cycles. In this instance, we already know that this setup needs a larger increase before more boost will be made. To increase the duty cycle, enter the program mode and toggle through to mode A. Press the right button to increase the duty cycle setting. With our duty cycle at 25%, we'll make another pull on the dyno. As you can see, we have a small increase in boost over our baseline and 10% duty cycle runs. Next, we'll increase the duty cycle to 40%. Like before, press the right button to increase the duty cycle setting. Now we'll go ahead and make another run. We'll jump ahead here a second. And as we come up on boost, you can see we're making 10 to 11 PSI boost. So we do have an increase from our last setting of 25%. As we get closer to our final desired boost level, we'll make smaller adjustments to our duty cycle. We'll increase it by another 10% for a final duty cycle of 50%. We'll go ahead and make another run. Fast forward a bit here. Run it up through the gears. Alright, now we're in the third gear. And on this final run, you can see that we make 12 to 13 PSI of boost. It's recommended that you log your runs while you adjust your true boost so you can review the valuable feedback information and make adjustments accordingly.
Here, we have overlaid the four runs on top of each other to show the different boost curves that each duty cycle created. You can see that our low duty cycle of 10% didn't net us any change over stock, but then as the duty cycle increased from 10 to 25 to 40%, and then eventually up to 50%, there is obviously a very noticeable increase in boost pressure. We went from a starting point of about 8 psi to a final boost level of 13 psi.